This is an ACC Network Studio update. Dana Evans and number nine Louisville trying to snap a two game losing streak, but facing the number four team in the country, NC State. Elizabeth Balagoon getting ready for this matchup with number four NC State. Louisville trying to stop a two game skid. That game coming up in just a few minutes right here, 8 p.m. Eastern time on the ACC Network and, of course, as always, streaming on the ESPN app. We are getting you set for a big top ten matchup right here on ACC Network. It is Alisa Cunane, NC State, getting ready to host number nine Louisville. We will have that for you in just a few minutes right here on ACC Network. You look at this top ten battle in Raleigh. And guys, when you when you look at that, what are you looking forward to right now? It's a Louisville struggling on a two-game losing streak. How do they turn it around tonight? Well, they get Elizabeth Balagoon back. I think that is a huge deal that cannot be understated. There's no coincidence that this team took a couple of L's in her absence. But I also think they've got them. It, it becomes a mental game because I think from Florida State into the matchup with Syracuse, something did not click, not just Balagoon's absent. Syracuse is a team that's hot and cold. Kiara Lewis had a tremendous game. They were able to pull out that victory. But I don't think that game represented the best of Louisville basketball. They've got to get back on track in terms of playing their signature style of basketball, which is getting up and down the floor, being terrific in the half court as far as defense, and then Dana Evans shooting Lights out, leading the conference in her three-point shooting. Um, I think Balagoon makes the biggest difference tonight. It was interesting because in Jeff Walls' press conference, he said, this team is not struggling mentally. And I think part of that was coach speak. Now, he's going to protect his team. He's going to say good things about his team, which I respect. But I feel like this team is struggling mentally a little bit with Louisville. With how poorly they've shot the ball from three recently, they're eight for 33 from three over the last two games. That's 24%. And what's interesting, too, is that Syracuse, you see they only scored 51 points against Syracuse. Syracuse played them in that signature zone. Now, NC State doesn't play a lot of zone, but will they incorporate some of those principles today and basically say, Louisville, we're going to force you to shoot. Because you've shot the ball so poorly recently, let's see if you can make threes in our building in front of our sold-out crowd. I mean, you also think, we kind of said this earlier in the season, how sustainable? Well, I mean, Dana Evans, terrific shooter, but how sustainable is that team heavily relying on a Evans and Jones? And we saw the crack in the armor, so to speak, in those last two games. What do you think the mindset right now is for Elizabeth Balagoon? Because obviously a great opportunity to go play with the uh, Nigerian national team. But you got to feel bad that you missed those two games as well. So I feel like she probably wants to come out and prove it. But you think you don't feel bad. I mean, I'm not. Is that what that smile said? I, I, Kelly, it's a, I mean, Kelsey and Kelly. It is the <laughs> most unique situation I think I've seen in college basketball. But you know she's a team player, too. So you hate that your team lost those two games when you weren't there. Do, do I? I? And I'm not bis bismarcking I her do. character. I do. I think she would, too. I, I mean, so this opportunity is tremendous. It becomes a once-in-a-lifetime deal. You can't pass this up. Or are we focused on what we're doing? I, I don't know that I, I would have taken both. it. I it's think you both. can be excited about be the both. opportunity and then also feel like, this is I a, hate that we just lost those two games. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. She's going to play in the Olympics. They qualified, by the way. I mean, she's going to play in the Olympics in Tokyo this summer. That's awesome. Opening ceremonies, all that stuff. But, and you have to let her go do that. It's a great opportunity. I still think that she feels a little bad that this team has struggled without her. But look, it's only two games. We yeah. play 30 Big games picture. for a reason. Right. If you win this game, everything's fine. Just go out there and play well and win this game tonight against NC State. I just, Olympic teams, and I don't know the rule for the Nigerian team, they have a way of making wrinkles for the folks they want on the team. I just don't know that she had to be there. I don't know. I'm not saying that she did or didn't. I think she still would have been on the Olympic team whether she made these games or not. But anyway. Well, in two games that they lost, and then, of course, before that, it was also the USA basketball game, right. which we said was a great opportunity for them as well. So we will see if Louisville is able to get back on track after the two-game losing streak. Meanwhile, on the other side, eight straight games, the longest active streak in the ACC for NC State right now. Let's get you out to Debbie Antonelli and Pam Ward with this top ten matchup. It is another sold-out crowd at Reynolds Coliseum. The highly anticipated matchup, Westmore and the NC State Wolfpack, they are rated number four in the country, their highest in 20 years, getting ready to take on Louisville. Jasmine Jones and company have lost two straight games. They have beaten NC State five straight times. First place on the line in the ACC. This is 
is the ACC Network, and we are pleased to have you with us as Louisville gets ready to take on NC State in a game that will go a long way in deciding who is the regular season champion and who gets the coveted first seed in the ACC tournament. The NC State Wolfpack have only lost to North Carolina in conference, so Louisville right behind them. Florida State and Duke in the three and four spots. So important because the top four get double buys in the ACC tournament. And we welcome you to Reynolds Coliseum. Pam Ward along with former Wolfpack sharpshooter Deb Antonelli. Boy, it's like a it's like a March Madness atmosphere I mean, in here. Come on, Pam, let's break it down a little bit, right? I mean, the crowd is unbelievable. They're packed in here. They're excited. They've been talking about this game all week. And Louisville comes in here. They've just lost two. Last week at this point, they were number one in the standings, and NC State was number two. So the tables have turned. But Louisville, you can't sleep on them now. They are really good. And they do have Elizabeth Balagoon back, who they didn't have for the two losses. And an extra special treat, we have the top two contenders for ACC Player of the Year. And as good as Louisville is, this is a great test for NC State, the number four team in the country, behind the play of their 6'5 center, Elisa Kunain, just a sophomore. They can play to her. They can play through her on the block. She's a willing passer. And to counter, Louisville has a top contender for ACC Player of the Year as well. Dana Evans, one of the best three-point shooters, creates pace, generates with her defense. She's in charge with the ball in her hands for Louisville. And this is going to be a great matchup between those two Player of the Year contenders. Uh, Dana Evans in the last two games, losses to Florida State and Syracuse, shot only 30% from the floor as Louisville, their offense struggled. The only two times they have failed to score 60 points in any game came in their last two. Elizabeth Balagoon got the ball number four. She was with Nigeria, who qualified for the Olympics. She is back, and let's see what we have in store. Evans gets it out to Shook. Jasmine Jones also struggling with her shot the last couple of games. Shook thought about it. Evans with the shot clock at four. Has to make something happen. They need a shot. Balagoon doesn't get it off in time. Once more with a very good first possession on defense. As good and balanced as NC State is offensively, their defense is a little bit underrated. They can guard their own. And in both of these matchups, we'll both see a lot of man-to-man -man defense. You have to be able to keep your player in front. If you over-rotate or if you over-help, both these teams are capable of making the extra pass and making you pay. NC State 14th in the nation in scoring defense. They can hit threes. Crutchfield can't get it, but the follow by Kayla Jones. And that's what I'm talking about. Evans gets caught on a switch, can't defend the glass, and then Louisville turns it over. An unforced error by Dana Evans. But two possessions, two turnovers now for Louisville, a team that usually does a great job of holding on to the basketball. Lisa Kune, number 33, sets a great screen on the top of the floor. And that's Jakia Brown-Turner, one of the top recruits in NC State history, a McDonald's All-American as a freshman. Terrific. Freshman class, they were a top five class last year. Brown Turner starts. And off the inbounds, perfect. Jones has four. NC State is unselfish and they are unassuming. They share the ball, they move, they cut with purpose, they dribble with a purpose. Their offensive habits are outstanding as part of the reason why they're number four in the country. Moving all the way up to number four. Balagoon does not get the bounce. Bianca Dunham able to beat Kunane for the rebound, and a foul has been called against Kunane. Well, that's a big deal for Louisville to pick up the first foul on Elisa Kunane. And look at the bounce pass, the great cut by Kayla Jones. Good timing, good action, good bucket. Kunane's foul puts Dunham on the line, 77% shooter. And one of the keys for NC State is keeping Kunane out of foul trouble, and that's an important part of the game plan. So watch for Louisville to look to attack her on the block now. Dunham gets Louisville's first points, and now some pressure 
It's one of the concerns for Westmore was Louisville's full court pressure and Dunham got the turnover. At least momentarily held ball to possession arrow in favor of NC State. You know, NC State is minus one in the turnover margin, and this is a big part of the game right here. Jakia Brown Turner, no ball fake. She dribbles into a double. Great defense by Bianca Dunham. It's one of the things that Dunham does. The senior, they don't depend on her to score a lot. Kunane got fouled before she took steps. Westmore in his seventh year has taken his team to four NCAAs, including three in a row and two straight Sweet 16s. But you think this is his best team? I think this is his best team in his seven years in Raleigh. There's no question about it. And it's the highest ranked team, as you mentioned, in 20 years for NC State. Bianca Dunham just picked up the foul. And Elisa Kunane, she does draw a lot of fouls. Over a third of all fouls called against NC State or towards or by the defense of NC State have been on Kunane. So she draws a lot of them, and then when she gets to the line, she's an 80% free throw shooter. Great hands, terrific footwork. She moves well without the ball. And you can see what she's done in the last couple of games. She's been outstanding for NC State, averaging 22 points and getting to the free throw line, as you mentioned, Pam. She shoots the fourth most free throws and makes the fourth most in the league. She gets her on average six times per game. Six to one. Louisville still looking for its first field goal of the game. The offense had been struggling. Dunham turns around and she now has all three for Louisville. And when Louisville can score, they can set up their full court press. And this is a big part of the way they play with pace and tempo. And it hasn't been their defense in their two-game losing streak. It's been their inability to make shots offensively. If they can make shots, they can dictate pe te pace and tempo. And they've been getting some good looks. The shot's just not falling. Crutchfield. Jasmine Jones gets it and goes. Shook wanted the ball. Both these teams' transition defense will be tested. Dunham. In and out, easy rebound for Kunane, who was the only player in the ACC averaging a double-double this year. I think Jeff Walls would prefer that Dun Bianca Dunham look to drive the ball against Kunane and try to put her in a, at a deficit defensively. Especially she already has one foul. Dunham and Kunane very physical on this end of the floor as well. Kunane takes it right to her. The rebound falls Balagoon's way. Yeah, I think Kanae, one more year in the weight room, should be able to play through that contact. Big basket for Dana Evans to get on the scoring column. Dana Evans second in the league in scoring, now down to 18 and a half points per game. It was a sixth player of the year last year, starting all season long for Louisville this season. So Kanae is looking to be aggressive early against Shook this time. And Kylie Shook does a great job of not allowing her to turn the corner and get to that left shoulder comfortably. Oh boy, somebody lost Shook, and that's the first lead for Louisville. Well, we anticipated this to be a high quality, well played, well prepared game. Both these coaches are outstanding. They both have two top 10 teams. Louisville scored the last six points. That is off the mark as well by Jones as NC State has gone cold. Yeah, there's a, a couple that aren't even close for NC State. We get to see Ace Koenig take a, take a shot for the Wolfpack. Their best three-point shooter. Evans found a little bit of space. Kai Crutchfield has got this assignment defensively, and it is a challenge to keep Dana Evans in front. Evans, great job to draw the foul on Crutchfield. That's all Dana Evans. Kai Crutchfield, as I mentioned, this is a tough matchup for anybody in the league to try to keep the quickness of Dana Evans in front of you. Look at this little shows the fake, draws the foul, gets the contact, and is, go, is going to the line. Crutchfield and Kunane have been subbed out for NC State. Evans is one of the best free throw shooters in the country. Fourth, in fact, at just over 91% on the season. Three-point play. It is a 9-0 Louisville run. It's 
State's missed its last four shots to fall behind. Brown Turner drives, tries to draw the foul, nothing called, much to the chagrin of the crowd. Balagoon, three ball. In and out, but nobody got a body on Shook. That's a couple of times that Kylie has found a free pass. You see, without Elisa Kunane on the floor, the middle of the floor opens up for Louisville, and they do a great job of getting to the glass. Erica Cassell in there now, she's 6'2". Three inches shorter than Shook. The defense by Balagoon. Koenig is just being blanketed on the perimeter. I mean, that's three shots that NC State has shot from deep, and it's not even close. I wonder if nerves plays a role in a packed house, highest ranking in 20 years. A lot of conversation this week. The buzz around Raleigh has been this game. Charlie Cream and just about everybody else has NC State now as a number one seed in the tournament. Cassell gathers. And now Conan brings the ball up, still looking for Ace to take her first shot. It's been over four minutes now that NC State has not scored. Hunter tough shot. Nobody there to rebound it but the gray jerseys of Louisville. NC State playing too much off the bounce right now. You've got to make Louisville's defense move. And I know what Grace Hunter was thinking. She had Shook on her. She wanted to take her off the bounce, but you got to do that in rhythm after ball reversal. Evans bottled up. Jasmine Jones, rainbow three. And Louisville firing on all cylinders now. Louisville getting whatever they want offensively. It's been five minutes plus since State has scored. Meanwhile, Louisville has scored 14 points. Hunter will step back, and the drought is over. Grace Hunter, last year, led the team in scoring, then had the ACL injury. Remember this NC State team had four ACLs last year, three to starters. And Grace Hunter was one of them. She's just starting to work her way back into form. Still not as explosive as we are used to seeing, but that was a huge three for Hunter. And that's a contested three by Balagoon. Remarkable with all the ACLs that uh, NC State still got to the Sweet 16 last year. No one going to the glass, one pass in the shot, no ball reversal. Both coaches thought offensive rebounding would be huge. Louisville doing a really good job right now controlling the pace on the road. Jones with the shook screen. And that time there were nothing but white jerseys underneath. Brown Turner. Well, we haven't had a stoppage to play in a while. Both teams starting to look a little ragged in this first quarter. Flying by. Yeah, I don't know why that's a good shot or why you would even take that. Westmore's going to get Elisa Kinane off the bench and back in the game. They are a different team when she's off the floor. Evans moves laterally so quickly. Tipped. Eight seconds to shoot. Finally, we have a timeout. Louisville up 15 to 8. When we come back, we'll look more and closer at Westmore's NC State team. In the first quarter, NC State is 22 and 1. They've won eight in a row. They're number four in the nation. Why? Because they have incredible balance on the offensive end. Eight, they have eight, five players that are plus nine in scoring. Their bench has been productive all season long. They come in with depth and they bring energy and they play through the post. Elisa Kunane at 6'5, one of the best scorers around the rim. They're a balanced three point shooting team. They make nine threes a game and they play terrific defense and with great pace now having said all that louisville shooting 50 percent from the floor nc state hasn't made a three louisville's getting whatever they want defensively nc state needs to get back to their good habits on the offensive end to be able to dig back in this nc state leading the acc and top 10 in the nation in threes but they are 0 for so far in this game and that's a good sequence as the shot clock expires. Ace Koenig has not taken a shot yet. 
for NC State. Kunane back in the game, was out for a couple of minutes in the first quarter. And Kunane does have one personal foul. There's Ace's first shot. They are 0 for 5 from distance in this game. Well, as we mentioned before, it's not been Louisville's defense that's been a problem. It has been their offensive efficiency. And it's amazing to see the body language, the energy, what Elizabeth Balagoon does for them being back on the floor. She gives them incredible confidence. She's another, another scorer. She's a long defender on the defensive end. Here she is with the ball. Missed the last two games, helping Nigeria qualify for the Olympics. Evans. A little bit too too much on that, but Jasmine Jones able to get inside of everybody for the putback. That's a big time crash on the glass by Jones. Jones is six feet tall, but has an incredible vertical loop, so she's able to take it away from taller players like Kunane. Now Balagoon is absolutely hounding Koenig. Jones, another bucket. NC State has a chance here for the last possession. Next shot clock is off. This is the largest lead of the night for Louisville. And that is a silly foul. That's two on Balagoon. Actually, Jeff Wallstein has three personal fouls in this quarter, so maybe fouls to give. Not bad to go for a risky steal. But Jasmine Jones doing a great job getting a steal and deflection for an easy two. Good move by Jeff Walls to get Balagoon out with two fouls. Yassine Diop, who started when Balagoon was away, is in number two for Louisville. Trying to get it into Kinane. Jones messes that up. Three ball. Skips off. And NC State, only eight points in the quarter. That ties the season low in any quarter for them this season. They missed all six of their threes. Louisville by 11. some young ladies, but for the next two hours, we need to freaking be nasty, all right? We got a rebound, everybody. Here we go. But well, we got to take better shots, and we got to box out, okay? Everybody got that? Welcome back. Westmore. kind enough to uh, wear the microphone for us tonight. Pam Moore, Deb Antonelli joining you from sold out Reynolds Coliseum, and Westmore not getting what he expected or I'm sure wanted in that first quarter. Elisa Kunan crashes to the floor, no foul call. Wow, that's only the sixth touch of the game for Kunan. So I'm going to tell you right now that there's a couple of times the ball's gone inside right here, and she's not getting fouled there. She's losing her balance, so she's going to have to play the game low to high and be tougher on the interior. Elisa Kunan only has two points coming from the free throw line. And in the first quarter, Pam, Bloom only missed seven shots. The offensive rebounded three of them. That's outstanding. NC State missed 13 and only got two offensive boards. Their shot selection was not good, and Louisville had something to do with it. We're going to have to be able to be better at executing here in the second quarter. Louisville plus eight on the rebounding stat sheet right now. Kunane wants it. Elizabeth Dixon picked up the foul on the other end of the floor. Now she's guarding Kunane. See now, if she puts two hands on her back and pushes, that's a foul. Now, the foul is called. Now, if you don't throw the ball in there, that foul doesn't get called, right? Because there is a lot of contact taking place on the block. Elizabeth Dixon is working really hard to keep Elisa Kunane from catching. So look, when you put two hands on the back, that's a foul. But right there, one arm, one leg, that's fine. When she turns around and faces, now you have to treat her like a ball handler. So two quick fouls for Dixon. She goes back to the bench after Jeff Walls gives her some words of wisdom, no doubt. Kunane hits them both, shook back in the game for the Cardinals. All of Kunane's points at the free throw line in the first half so far. Evans. A little bit 
wide left. Rebound taken down by Crutchfield. What's interesting is NC State jams and goes under. They screen the ball screen in action, and they're still doing that with Dana Evans, who's the best three-point shooter in the league. Turnover by Boyd. Gives it back to Louisville. Apostle Robinson is in. Number five in gray to give him a three-guard lineup. Jones. Goes left, kicks it out. Robinson, not known for her shooting, gets one to dribble in. Well, that's her average right there, two points. But as you mentioned, this lineup on the floor puts Jasmine Jones at the four spot, which is a tough check for NC State. Boy, it gets inside to D. Up, count it. Jada Boyd is a freshman for NC State, number five in white. When she comes in the game, she brings tremendous energy. She crashes the offensive glass. And right here, she catches it on the elbow or in the pinch. A one dribble move, hard to the bucket, draws a foul, and finishes. Three point play for Boyd. Foul was on Nassim Diop, the grad transfer from Pitt. Lead is down to eight, and the crowd getting into it a little bit more. Diop given some room by Koenig, and she shoots over her. I look at Jeff Walls over there, you know, every time Diop shoots it, it's kind of like, no, <laughs> no. But I'll tell you what, she did a great job while Gallagher was out, because she brings great energy to everything she does. Not as good a shooter as Balagoon. That's only the eighth three for Yassine all year. Kunain stuffed by Kylie Shook, who is the best shot blocker in the league. So you got to have a pump fake. you got to have a counter. you got to get Kylie Shook off her feet. It's a great defensive play inside. 14 seconds to shoot, Koenig. Inbounds. Jada Boyd calling for the ball, and she's open with a smaller defender. You've got to throw it in there. Hunter able to get it to her in the right spot, and Boyd scores. And Boyd can defend smaller players with her great length and her quickness. She moves her feet really well. Lead is back to single digits. Slip. Good help. Yep, off the fingertips picked up by Boyd. We're thinking about it. Now drives on Shook. Yeah, you could have had a cup of coffee waiting on that one. You've got to make a better decision than that. The more she hesitated on top of the floor, the more Louisville just pinched to the middle. Watch it, Diop does a great job, steps in, draws a charge. First on Boyd, she goes out in favor of Kayla Jones. Denise Brooks, Brian Brunette, and Bruce Morris, our officials this evening. Wide open, Evans can't get it to go. Koenig chases it down. She tries to take Jasmine Jones below the level of the screen, and Jones gets over the top. And because Koenig handles the ball, she draws a foul. First foul on Jasmine. No, I have to be honest, I'm not so sure about that one. I thought Jasmine did a good job of getting over the top of that screen. Jeff Walls talking to Denise Brooks about that, probably that very same thing. He's done a tremendous job at Louisville now in his 13th year. This is his 10th straight 21 season. Taking his team to several Final Fours, a couple of Championship games, and a foul on the floor as Kunain tried to rebound. That's a really good job on the weak side for Kunain to hold her ground. When the shot is taken from the wing or the baseline area, 90% of the time it's going to rebound like this to the weak side. And Kunain does a great job of getting early position under the boards to be able to offensive rebound, and another trip to the free throw line. First foul on Kylie Shook. Lisa Kunain, 4 for 4 from the line, 0 for 4 from the floor. Next Thursday, another women's basketball doubleheader. 
At 6 Eastern, Syracuse hosts Clemson in the All-Orange game. Then at 8 Eastern, this NC State team is on the road at Miami. Both games right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. As the season winds down, Miami right now playing in Virginia, where they are winning. Shook. Listed at 6'4", but looks taller than that to me. We need your tape on her. I think she's 6'6", six, six, buddy. I'm get my tape measure on. <laughs> oh, there's another slip. Good help. Good pass. Excellent execution. What a terrific job of moving without the ball. Unselfish play. Yeah, that was textbook, and now Jones, the first player from either team to get into double figures. And gets the lead back to 11. Kunane working against Shook in the post. Gets the ball. Not to win momentarily by Diop as the shot clock winds down. You see Diop with some terrific defense, but it stays alive as the desperation shot hit the rim. Good decision by Grace Hunter to kick it back out. Clock again dying. And the violation turnover gives it to Louisville. The Cardinals trying to beat NC State for the sixth straight time of 11. Welcome back, second quarter. Louisville on the road with an 11 point lead over NC State. Now, watch the action over here. You got the weak side busy, and Shook's going to dive to the basket on a slip. And Jasmine Jones is going to relocate on the perimeter. This is a well designed play. Weak side keeps the help defense busy. A nice slip to the bucket, and a great lift by Jasmine Jones, who is two for two outside the three point line. With 10 points leading the way for. The Louisville Cardinals, they have lost back-to-back -back games for the first time in three years. And they are trying to avoid a three-game losing streak for the first time in eight years. States won eight straight, and they're trying to hold on to first place in the ACC. Robinson fouled. Well, you never want to foul Robinson. That's not what she does offensively, is look to run sets for her. But Jeff Walls thought, you must have had an advantage with Ely on, on the defensive assignment. Because Mikasa Robinson, she's a player that everyone would love to have on their team. She works hard every day, she hustles, she's unselfish, she can defend. She's a good ball handler, and she's terrific in their full court press, which you should expect to see right here. Not a great shooter. In fact, only about 54% from the free throw line. She hit one out of two on that trip. Biggest lead now is 12 points. But you like to play with teammates like that that don't need the ball right. and can add value to what you do. Yeah, she doesn't care if she scores. Right. Heady little player, sophomore from Ashley, Kentucky. So there's a mismatch inside. They're really struggling. Shot clock again in the single digits. Crutchfield. Nothing doing. Kunane got it stripped on the way up. Wow, and that follow just would not go down. Good look for Kayla Jones. Really good collapse on Kunane on the inside. Dana Evans. Well, she can really turn the corner because Kunane doesn't want to pick up another Dana foul on Evans. that hedge. That's a smart play by Dana Evans. That's where that quickness comes in. So Evans. That's the first three for NC State after they missed their first nine of the game. Brown Turner, again, the best three-point shooting team in the league, and they finally got their first one to fall. Neither Conan nor Kunane have a field goal in this game. They're two leading scorers. Ace is going to come back in at the next whistle for State. If I'm Crutchfield, I'm not letting Dan Evans get the ball back. <laughs> now they need to shoot. Diop just got it off. What a rebound. There's what you're talking about with Mikasa Robinson. Just hustling in there, one of the smallest players on the floor. That's why you love to play with a teammate like that. All she cares about is making the next winning play. 
Was a hell ball, however, and goes over to NC State. Now this is right before the end of the shot clock, and then this is just a great effort individually by Robinson. Only 5-7, but getting in there. Round Turner, that's a toughie. Wow, but it was deflected out of bounds. So the ball stays with State. They have 17 seconds to shoot. And NC State scored on the last out of bounds play underneath. You gotta execute on your situational offense right now because they're really struggling to find some offense. That'll work for Jones. Good job to get the switch. And they know where to go with it. That's playing unselfishly with a high IQ. Sold out crowd at Reynolds as we approach and hit two minutes to go in the half. Shakir Brown-Turner now getting a turn on Dana Evans. Charge. That's a terrific job by Ely to step in and draw the charge. Did you know Dana Evans is looking to turn the corner on that hedge? It's a great pinch from the strong side. First one on Dana Evans. Well, you don't want to leave the strong side shooter, but it's Robinson, so you can help off the corner. Koenig. Finding some space, and finally, Ace gets a field goal. Ace can handle, Ace can counter, and Ace can score. Often she shoots twos, mostly threes, but she showed us right there she can get to the paint. Seven nothing run, cuts the lead in half. Jones elevates. NC State on a run. And it all started with the three of Brown Turner. Hunane working on Shook, got stuffed. So it's Cardinal basketball. That's a tremendous job by Kylie Shook. And look at Conan right here. She goes left, she goes right, she counters. Good footwork inside. That's just by one-on-one. -on -one. And then Shook does a great job. Kunane's gotta be tougher on the block. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout. NC State's cut it to seven. Welcome back to NC State. The Wolfpack were trailing by 14. They've cut it to seven in this battle for first place in the ACC. State right now a game in front of Louisville. The up, nope, shook, couldn't follow. Good change by NC State. They look to trap off the timeout. I like the adjustment by Wes Moore. Koenig. Good rebound by Ely to give him a second chance. Shook has really bottled up Kunane. Yeah, terrific job, Gardner one-on-one. -on -one. You don't need to bring help, and that's affected NC State's ability to shoot threes. But not Dana Evans. Dana Evans has done a terrific job every year getting better at shooting the three ball. What was that? I don't know what that was. More time left on the clock than they thought. So Louisville led by as many as 14. They take a 10 point lead into the locker room. This is just a great job to spot up and shoot it in transition. And then NC State had plenty of time to get to the basket. So we have two of the front runners for ACC Player of the Year. Here is the comparison. Evans outscoring Kunane 10 to five. And the big surprise, Kunane does not have a field goal yet. So Louisville up by 10 at the break as we take you to the studio. Welcome into the ACC Network Halftime Report alongside Kelly Gramlich and the working Monica McNutt <laughs> right down to the wire. <laughs> we have got your Halftime Report right now. Louisville up 10, 33 to 23 over NC State. And guys, this is not what we were expecting out of this first half.
I mean, you look at what Elisa Kunain has not done in this ballgame. She has five points so far in this one. She's 0 for 4, though. Those points come from the free throw mm -hmm. line. Kelly, should we tell them what we said before this game, or should we keep that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that between us for okay. now. We might be right <laughs> okay. at the end. We might be. But, you know, Louisville's been so physical with Elisa Kunain. And between Dunham and Shook, they've been really effective. And then Louisville just seems like they're playing like the old Louisville. They're playing with a lot more confidence. They're saying, look, we're the Louisville Cardinals. We don't lose three games in a row. They've never lost three games in a row since they've joined the ACC. Dana Evans has played really well. Jasmine Jones, for me, has been the X factor for Louisville. She's done it all, made a couple threes, rebounded the ball well. She's been great. I think statistically we know what they do. Various shooting categories, Jasmine Jones able to score. But the thing that I think is most underrated for Louisville is the way that de they defend. Yes. Jeff Walls has had this team as a defensive prowess in the conference for eons. I mean, you go back to Angel McCutcher as Defensive Player of the Year. Today, Mikasa Robinson on the ball, mm -hmm. hounding Jasmine Jones, or not hounding Jasmine Jones, that's her teammate, <laughs> hounding Kai Crutchfield, hounding, hounding Aslan Koenig. I mean, they've done a great job of moving in the half-court set with so much intensity on the defensive end. We really like what we saw from Louisville in the first half, but Wes Moore, you know, is going to go into that locker room and say, hey, we're at home right now, we've won eight games straight, and this is a big game, but this is a game that we need to win. What adjustments, Kelly, do you think they need to make in the second half? Well, they've got to rebound the ball better. Louisville's out-rebounding them right now, and look, NC State is used to shooting the ball really well. They're one for ten. They finally got one to go and you could see their spirits lift because they really feed off the three-point line. They have to shoot the ball better. Koenig, Jada Boyd, Kai, Kutch, Kai, Kai Crutchfield, excuse me, they really have to shoot the ball better if they want to stay in this game and push Louisville. Part of that though is understanding how they're being played, Kelsey, right? Like mm -hmm. you can make a team with defensive constitution and intensity pay for that, right? As, as good as Louisville has been on defense, the ball still snaps mm -hmm. around the perimeter quicker. So they've got to be deliberate in setting screens, getting one, op one another open, making sure that ball goes inside to Alyssa in a position to be a threat because we know that she's a willing passer and can find those shooters. So yes, they have to knock down shots, but make Louisville defend into the half-court shot clock. Make them get tired and then find a good spot. Louisville led by as many as 14 up 10 right now. We will see what happens in this top 10 matchup in the second and half you do not want to miss it right here on ACC Network. Welcome back to Reynolds Coliseum where all the seats have been filled. NC State though facing their largest halftime deficit of the season down 10 to Louisville with first place in the ACC on the line. Pam Ward along with with Deb Antonelli a lot of anticipation coming into this game. What do you think NC State needs to do differently? Well, I think they had to be tougher. I mean, Louisville's good. They're up 10. They're beating them on the glass. They're shooting the basketball and getting to do whatever they want to do offensively. And NC State can't get it going offensively. They just got to get tougher. Their mindset has to change. All right, Louisville had lost two in a row coming into this game. Let's take a look. Dana Evans is back. She's back. It's amazing what Elizabeth Balagoon's presence on the floor does for body language and confidence. Because Dana Evans and Jasmine Jones have combined eight for 14 in the first half. And Dana has got her stroke going and her ability to read and turn the corner on that ball screening action. And NC State made a run. Jakia Brown Turner got them going in the second quarter. She hits a three and a nice post up in, in on an inverted play. And then Tone doing a great job of going off the bounce and countering to get in the paint to score. NC State's going to need more offense. They shot 26% in the first half. Koenig, Koenig and Kunain, excuse me, the two leading scorers. That's a problem. They only have one field goal between them. Well, at least Kunain 0 for 5. Ace Koenig 1 for 3. She has not hit a 3. You mentioned that. NC State only one of 11 from distance. Again, this is the best three-point shooting team in the ACC. They average nine makes per game and hit on average 37% of the time. But really struggling in the first half. Jones attacks the basket right away. What a tough two right down the lane line. Now that's what I'm talking about. There's an example of being tougher with a basketball in your hands. It had been a 14-point lead, now cut down to eight. Dana Evans and Jasmine Jones each shooting around 30% in their last two games. Both of them losses to Florida State and Syracuse. Turning the tables a bit in this game. Dunham misses badly. 
I thought before the game that Kai Crutchfield was going to be a key for NC State, and I, now I feel even more importantly about that in the second half as she's got to guard Dana Evans, and she's got to be a threat offensively. She did not hit any of her shots in the first half. Kai, 0 for 4 from the floor, has not scored. Balagoon, who is back after missing the last two games. She was with her national team, Nigeria, qualifying for the Olympics and uh, has made a difference coming back. She gives them confidence. She gets them in their natural rotation. She adds to their depth. And NC State's going to have to take a hard look at their ball screen defense because right now Louisville knows it's a hedge and under. And they are turning the corner trying to get to the paint every time. Balagoon hits one of them. Got back from Serbia on Monday after playing in that tournament. Traveled here yesterday. Did not score in the first half for Louisville, but has started. And they're trying to work really hard to get Kanane established inside. And that's just a great job defensively again by Kylie Shook. She got a couple of blocks on Kanane's shots in the first half. Jones got just a little bit of space. That's all she needs. Ball screen defense. Jones and Evans combining out for 22 points. So the top two scores for Louisville certainly doing their jobs tonight. Not the, not the case for NC State. Uh, Westmore's got a lot of tricks in uh, his playbook that he can go to to try to get isolation matchups, try to get switches. A little bit more weapons in Louisville. Now watch Shook right here. She gets off the contact, does a terrific job of getting around Kune. And then right here, this is just a great job. You go under, it's a rescreen by Bianca Dunham, and it's a wide open jump shot. Boy, Kune just can't buy one. And then a foul called. If that's on Balagoon, it is. Holy smokes, that's three on Elizabeth Balagoon. She has to go out, Diop comes in. When I talk about Elisa Kunane playing the game low to high, I'm talking about her sitting in the post, playing lower, bending her knees, posting up. When she does that, for the most part, but when she goes into her shot, she stretches and elongates her body, and that's why Shook has been able to get the advantage on block shots. And see how she sits right here? Now she's going to counter. Yeah, she lowered her shoulder. There was contact. Nothing called either way. Elisa, Elisa is 0 for 7 from the floor. Diop just in for Balagoon delivers. Yeah, yeah, she's known to her teammates. She's not shy about taking that shot. No, she's not. She doesn't need a sweat on her to get her <laughs> shot off. That's for sure. Just like that, it's back to a 13-point advantage. Nice flare screen. Donick just off, but Jones is there to clean up. Took a couple of tries, but she got it in. Kayla's in the double figures. NC State's got to get better right here on this end of the floor. They have got to guard Louisville much better in their ball screen defense. Let's see if they change anything. Louisville shooting 52% from the floor this evening. Jam and go under. To walk. Jones couldn't control it. Coach Walls asking for the foul. Six turnovers now for Louisville. Jakia Brown Turner typically doesn't show very much emotion for NC State, and I see her starting to get fired up. We, Wes Moore, all access. He's got a microphone on. Before the game, he talked. He said, You're a bunch of nice ladies, but I need you to be mean tonight. Tone got it blocked, but then recovered nicely. Good action by NC State. Second basket for Ace, the senior from right outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. Dana Evans. Oh, tough. I mean, that is a tough basket. Really nice. Tone got it knocked out of her hands. Evans, 
little bit too strong off the glass. Can't get anything going in transition either. Here we go playing some very active defense this evening. Koenig fires away. Just that kind of a night. And this is where Dana Evans is really starting to understand the point guard position. See how she changes the pace of the game. Evans a natural two, came off the bench last year, and now a starter. And earning that starting role and becoming the point guard. Westmore is like being a point guard when his offense is in front of his bench. Do not call for the foul on the drive by Brown Turner. Second on Diop. Saturday afternoon, we will take you to Little John Coliseum for men's game. It's number five, Louisville. They're on top of the ACC standings. They'll be at Clemson for Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. What a tough loss for Louisville men last night on the road at Georgia Tech. Big win for Josh Pastner and his team. And Turner commonly hits both free throws. To a nine point deficit midway through the third quarter. Now, can you get three consecutive stops if you're NC State to get right back in this? Good defense. Elizabeth Dixon now in, playing the post for Louisville. Evans off the mark. Main posting up now on Dixon. Got it blocked by Dixon. What a terrific job the front line of Louisville has done. 0 for 8 on the interior is Elisa Kunane. Evans just floats. That's just a great job by Jeff Wall's team and Dana Evans. They know that NC State is going to jam and go under. And Dana Evans is so quick, she can still turn the corner. The reason why you go under that is so that you don't allow her to get to the paint. She's a really tough person to guard in this league because of her three-point shooting ability and her quickness off the bounce. And rebound to Evans. She lost her, her the rubber band, the hair thing. What do you call that? What's your hair band? Hair tie. Thank you. Her hair tie is gone. In fact, Jasmine Jones came out on the court to pick it up. It's the second time in the game she's lost it, actually. Does have the headband to help her out a little bit. Crutchfield. Kai Crutchfield, or someone from NC State, needs to come alive here. Back to nine. First basket for Kai. The team speed of Louisville doesn't really allow you to get out in transition. Even when NC State defensive rebounds, Louisville does a great job of getting back. So you really got to defend, and then you've got to execute on the offensive end. Evans able to just quickly get around people. The Wolfpack come away with it. Robinson now in the game. Lost Jones. Really nice quick hitter in transition by NC State. Really nice pass by Ace Koenig, and now the crowd is back. It's a 10 to 4 NC State run. Timeout at Reynolds. NC State, they're efforting. They're trying. When Elisa Cunane is over on the interior, Louisville has done a terrific job behind the top shot blocker in the ACC, Kylie Shook, contesting, making it tough, not allowing her to get deep position. Usually, Kunane does her work before the ball gets in her hands, and it's a simple finish, but Louisville's defense 
has been fantastic. And because they can guard her one-on-one -on -one and play her straight up, they don't leave anybody on the perimeter, Pam. That's why NC State struggled to find some open threes. And the player comparison, two of the top contenders for ACC Player of the Year, Kunane really struggling. Usually she hits 58% of her shots from the floor, second only to Emma Guy in the league. And then Shook gets inside. And that was a really good timeout you brought by Coach Wallace, right? I did, I did, because I thought this place was getting ready to erupt. So he silences the crowd. Great ATO, easy two points. NC State goes to their horn series with the two post players on the elbow, shooters in the corner. Nice spin. She was effective in the first half. That she is Jada Boyd, number five, the freshman. She is quick and explosive off the bench. That is her first basket of the second half. The op in for Balagoon again, not shy about shooting. Balagoon on the bench with three fouls for the Cardinals. See, look at Boyd, watch her shape up. She wants the ball. The defense by Dixon initially, but then the foul on the other side. I asked for toughness, didn't I? That's what I'm talking about right there. What a great job by Jada Boyd to draw contact. Watch this right here. Two strong dribbles. Show the ball. Step through. Draw the foul. Big time play for the rookie. We got to step up right now. We knew it was going to be a challenge. We got to do it. Everybody's got to box out. Okay, we got to limit them to one shot. We're in the bonus. Quit playing with the ball around the three-point line and attack the basket. We got to get some stops, y'all. We got to get some stops right now. So keep them in front of you. Box them out, all right? Keep them in front. Attack the rim. Be aggressive. That's what Jada Boyd just did for Westmore. Exactly what he asked his team to do in the last time out. And the freshman completes a three-point play. It's a four-point lead, closest since it was 10 to six back in the first quarter. Evans drives. Rebound Boyd. Ooh, Tony and Boyd almost tipped it away from each other. Freshman got a block by Shook. Shook is outstanding. She is such a terrific shot blocker. It's her third of the game. But I like going inside to Jada Boyd. She's quick, she's athletic, she's active. Wants the ball. And this match now with Boyd on Shook. She got it to fall. Kylie Shook is, uh, Shook is more finesse than she is power on the block, but it's effective either way. Switch. Westfield can't get it to go. Balagoon back in there playing with three fouls. Comes up with the rebound. He had a chance to take the last shot. Evans looks over at Coach Walls for instruction. Jones hanging out at the three-point line, but Evans put up the floater. That ends the third quarter. Louisville up by six. State, though, ended the quarter on a 15-8 run to make it close as we head to the final 10 minutes. Welcome back to NC State. Bracketology, according to Charlie Cream, he has the NC State Wolfpack as a number one seed. Louisville went from a one to a three with back-to-back -back losses. Florida State in there as well. Duke had a big win tonight. Virginia Tech had to go to overtime to beat Georgia Tech. It's a big win for both Virginia Tech and Duke tonight. And, and this is what Charlie projects in the Fort Wayne Regional. NC State is a one seed, Maryland has a two. Now, if Louisville wins here, I don't know how you keep Louisville out of Fort Wayne. They're three and a half hours from Fort Wayne. And it doesn't matter whether they're the one or the two. Uh, it's Unfortunately, it's part of the rules, but geography plays a big part in seeding in the women's tournament on the top line. 
and the second line, and the third line, and the fourth line. Dunham, her turn to get stuck. First block shot of the game goes to Boyd. The freshman coming up big in the second half. Kunane, three ball, got it. If you were going to tell me her first basket was going to be a three, I would have told you you were crazy. It makes it a one possession game here in the fourth quarter. Kunane had missed her first eight shots of the game. I'll tell you who's changed the rhythm for NC State. It's Jada Boyd, the freshman. Balagoon bottled up. I'd go right back to Kunane for three, Pam. I'd run another set for her. Gets it inside, working against Shook, kicks it out. Koenig get it, got it tipped. Balagoon with the defensive play. There's that length on the perimeter, and then Mulva throws it away. The block inside by Jada Boyd. And then the wide open spot up, drain it. Three pointer by Kunane, her 11th of the season. That's a good percentage at over 40%, but doesn't take a lot of them. Kunane doesn't even look to turn. Well, actually, they're still going to play to her. They, they always play to the post. That's when they're at their best offensively. That's another good defensive play by yeah. Balagoon. I mean, look, we knew Louisville was good defensively. <laughs> that hasn't been their problem. They played two really tough games in the ACC without Balagoon, and it affected their rotations, their confidence, and everything. They went from on the top of the ACC to second place, and they lost their number one seed along the way. Jasmine Jones can't get it to go, and it's Wolfpack basketball. Toughness again, Pam. Now we go down the stretch, right? Who can execute the best? Who can play the details of the game and the offensive habits that they've generated all season without game slippage? Boyd. Had to go in and out, but then a foul on the follow. Brown Turner, another freshman, right in the thick of things. Jada Boyd, move her up your scouting report, ACC teams. Because when she plays, she brings it. Good ball fake, and then a great job by Jakia Brown Turner to slide in there and get that offensive rebound. Third foul on Jasmine Jones. So both she and Balagoon have three, along with Elizabeth Dixon for the Cardinals. Brown Turner 0 for 2, but a rebound by who else? But she threw it away. Boyd, one of her few mistakes tonight. Diop left open. You know she's going to shoot it, right? Oh, yeah. And she gets the dead roll. The <laughs> dead roll. Dana Evans was wide open for a three. Just to the left, to the left of her. I don't think that Yasin even glanced you that way. You weren't thinking about Dana. Yeah, I am not giving this ball up. Turner, good defense by Jones, couldn't hang on to it. Koenig has had trouble finding space. Brown Turner finds the bottom of the net. Cuts the lead in half to three. Balagoon, good drive. Nobody wanted a foul for NC State. And if you're Elisa Kunane, you got to be aggressive right here. You only have one personal foul. you got to try to block that shot or try to draw a charge. Balagoon's first field goal of the game. Kunane driving on Shook. Who fouled it? Reverse the ball in transition, and you get this. A terrific step through by Balagoon, a great take before NC State can get organized. 
Beginning, one of the first things I said about both these teams' defenses is you had to keep your player in front. You could not over-rotate because both teams pass the ball so well. Louisville has done an excellent job of guarding one-on-one, -on -one, not helping or over-helping, not past the midline. They forced NC State to really execute and make plays. Evans with the ball in her hand. She and Jasmine Jones combined for 20 points in the first half. Just six so far in the second half as NC State has chipped away at what had been a 14-point lead. And just as we say that, Jones announces her presence with authority. She's got four in this half. It's the lead back to six. Really wants the ball. Got it. And got fouled again. That's the extra effort by Kudane. Again, another trip to the free throw line. Watch right here, Jones doing a nice job. She's got the one on one. It's cleared out. The middle of the lane is open. And that's where she excels off the bounce in the mid lane. Both Evans and Jones are really tough to keep in front. Third foul on Kylie Shook sends Kunane back to the line. This is her fifth trip. Not what we usually get out of the sophomore. Excellent free throw shooter at 80%. Seven for 10 tonight from the line. Jasmine Jones coming alive. What a tough, what a nice shot. And that was a terrific set and quick hitter in transition. Humane stuffed again by Shook. Shook has dominated the low block. Eight blocks for Louisville on the night. Jones gets a big offensive board and then they kick it out. Malagoon thought about it, decided to drive, and hit it. NC State looks like their spirit's been broken. They got it down to three on several occasions, but now it's back up to 10. Jasmine Jones starting to come back here. Jones, you're not going to guard me? You're going to go under? I'm going to make you pay. Jasmine Jones off to a slow start in the second half, but it's really picked it up. All that jazz. She has been fantastic. Off her defense, off the bounce, in transition. You go under. Okay, I got plenty of time to line this one up. Three triples in the game for Jasmine Jones for 17 points to lead Louisville. Louisville losing two in a row coming into this game, and you see Jones and Evans, the, the two best scorers, struggling not tonight. Over 52% of their shots. NC State had gotten to within three, and then Jasmine Jones started to turn it on again. Kylie Shook just picked up her fourth foul She's for Louisville. Three Excuse in me. a row right here, Pam, in the fourth quarter quickly. That is a big factor. She's been terrific on defense against Kunane. That's a great scouting report steal by Dana Evans. Dana Evans, the junior from Gary, Indiana. He needs the ACC and threes made. And has done a great job at the point. I think it's a good decision to take some time off the shot clock here. As long as the, at the end of the clock, the ball's here with Dana Evans or with Jasmine Jones, and that's a great feed inside by Diop. It is a nine to one run for Louisville after State got within three. Kunane and Jones just collided with no whistle. State now is going over three minutes without a field goal. What a great answer by Louisville. A team that again had lost two in a row for the first time in three years. Not lost three in a row in eight years.
NC State looking to track now off the ball screen action. Shook does not get the bounce that time. You don't need threes, but you need to score quickly. Ace Conan with the ball, just four points tonight, 0 for 6 from 3. They have done a great job running her off the three-point line all night. And Kylie Shook's got four fouls. Conan's got to go at her. Wow, Kylie Shook with another block. The ACC's all, or Louisville's all-time leading shot blocker. Nine block shots for Louisville in the game. And did that even with the four personal fouls. Took a chance, got the block. Lisa Kunane, one for 12 from the floor. A lot of that because of Kylie Shook. Magoon, good job to keep, keep the ball alive. And as you mentioned, they're just going to take a little bit of the air out of the ball right now. I mentioned Wes Moore being a good point guard when his offense is in front of his team. Jeff Walls is a better point guard tonight. He's done a fantastic job with his team here. Calling a timeout right when NC State was making a run in the third quarter. Right? Silence the crowd, executed out of the timeout. Their defense has been outstanding. Kylie Shook has been tough blocking shots inside and handling the Elisa Kune matchup on the interior. <laughs> NC State coming out of the scrum with just two minutes left in the game. Jones attacks the basket and the chance for the three-point play. See if West Moore puts his defensive team on the floor for this next possession. This is a great take by Kayla Jones. So Jones at the line. Trying to complete the three-point play. NC State, one game ahead of Louisville for first place in the ACC. This is their only matchup of the regular season. And Louisville's in, has put NC State in the bonus, so they don't want to foul and put NC State on the free throw line. Here comes a full court press. That is just so quick. Untrappable, unflappable. <laughs> Jasmine Jones draws the foul. That's a great take. This is where Jones at the four is really tough to guard. Remember we talked about earlier when they go small, Kayla Jones trying to keep Jasmine Jones in front as a, as a challenge with that small lineup with her at the four. She has had a night. What an answer for Jones. With she and Evan struggling in those two losses. Everybody wondering what's wrong with Louisville. They went from a one seed to a projected three seed in the NCAA tournament. But they have answered every challenge here tonight. I think this puts them back in the conversation on the one line, along with a team like Maryland. Potentially another team out of the Pac-12, like a UCLA. Yeah. Look, Louisville's going to be in Fort Wayne, Look, no matter what their number is. That's what I think, because of geography. A lot of time now on this possession for State. Jones finishes. He used a lot of shot clock. Westmore, Westmore wanted a timeout, and the officials didn't see it. One minute to go. I saw it because as soon as the basket scored, I looked right at him. That's usually what the officials do because they anticipate the timeout. Russell Robinson back in the game for Louisville. Gives another ball handler and defender. That would be. Oh, bucket. This 
Elizabeth Balagoon has spent a lot of time on airplanes in the last few days. Coming back from Serbia, and that she told me she knew it would be tougher, Pam, when she was over there as the high field hits a three. Now West Moore gets a timeout. But Balagoon today in shoot around said, I am so happy to be back. I missed my teammates. And I learned that uh, I got to be tougher and grittier from my experience with the national team. Yeah, and that's one thing that you that you you hear often when players even get to train or practice against the national team. Louisville had a chance to play the U.S. national team, but Balagoon for three. She hesitates. You don't come with a long closeout. Wide open. So Jeff Walls, his team going to the three line, and according to Charlie Cream, our bracketologist, he says that Louisville will move back to a two with the win tonight. And Maryland would become the final number one seed, replacing NC State. Maryland had an emphatic win against Iowa tonight. Maryland's won 10 in a row. They, they are playing some good basketball, and it's a team that NC State beat earlier. So if Louisville hangs on to win, both teams will have two losses. And Louisville with the tie break since they only played this one time during the regular season. NC State has not won the regular season in the ACC since 1990, right? That's 30 years. That's staggering. That's a long time. I read that in prep for this game, and I was like, what? What the what? 30 years? And they have not won a tournament since 1991. The great KL with the head coach for all of that success, but it's been a, it's been a little bit of a dry spell. They've gotten to the tournament regularly. Westmore has gotten into two straight Sweet 16s, but that's a, that's a long time for this program. It's a drought for sure. Louisville trying to get what would be their third straight regular season title. Of course, Notre Dame has dominated since they joined this league. Well, Duke dominated with Gail Gessencourt. Yep. Sylvia Hatchell had her win. Oh, but Ivory Latta and Raina Larkins, they won, dominated the, the league for Maryland before they left for the Big Ten. Lamentable. You know, I'm not happy about that. But uh, now NC State trying to hang in there. Malagoon back at the line. Tomorrow night, a top 10 ACC wrestling matchup right here in this building as NC State, their unbeaten take on the once beaten Hokies of Virginia Tech. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Now doing delivering at the line. NC State's eight game winning streak and it come to a close, just their second loss of the year. They lost to North Carolina. And now Louisville about to come in and beat them for the sixth straight time. And you could tell Jeff Walls at shoot around today was confident about his group and put together a terrific game plan. He anticipated NC State's ball screen defense and his preparation. And getting Elizabeth Balagoon back. Puts everybody back in their normal rotation and in their normal routine on the floor. And then what a terrific job by Kylie Shook. Crutchfield with the three, but it's going to be too little, too late. Ace Koenig just four points tonight. She was 0 for 6. So Koenig and Kunane will combine. Well, Kunane was 1 for 12. They're combined 3 for 21 from the floor, the two leading scorers. Kudane did get to the line, got most of her points at the free throw line, but just not enough. Didn't see a lot of smile from Big Smile today. Yeah. And as Kylie Shook didn't give her anything to smile about. Kylie Shook with a tremendous effort, especially on the defensive end. There's Kylie, who is one of 15 players on the Naismith Defensive National Player of the Year list. Well, she was impressive. Uh, she showed us tremendous gritty toughness. Her grit and toughness was outstanding on the defensive end. Jeff Walls has got really got to be pleased with this performance. You know, I've said all season, Florida State's had the hardest conference schedule, but Louisville's had the toughest stretch, and they went through part of that stretch without Elizabeth Balagoon, which the committee will take into consideration. Coming in here and 
knocking off NC State, the number four team, will carry a lot of weight as you move forward with the remaining schedule. A lot of winnable games there at the end of the season. We will be, or I will be in uh, Louisville for that Notre Dame game Sunday afternoon at 3 Eastern time. But Jeff Walls, very pleased with the effort as well he should be. Kylie Shook, as we mentioned, has been absolutely terrific. 10 points, 10 rebounds. She almost had a triple-double with blocks because she has seven blocks. And really bottling up Lisa Kunane. So NC State, 59 points, ties a season low. They had 59 and a win against Wake Forest. But they got down in the first quarter, could not quite catch up. Louisville wins it. So Kylie Shook is tonight's player of the game, brought to you by Zaxby's. She was terrific on both ends of the floor, particularly defensively. And we will be looking for an interview with Kylie before we say goodnight. That is a terrific line, especially considering she's going against Kunane, one of the best players in the league. Yeah, that was an outstanding job to hold Kunane to one for 12. And the one basket that Elisa Kunane had was a three. Really unusual. Terrific job defending inside. It's a big win on the road for Louisville. So NC State drops to 11 and two in the league. Cardinals also 11 and two. So a tie is off the ACC standings as the season winds down. Again, this is their only regular season matchup. NC State has games coming up against Georgia Tech. Then they go to Miami. Hey. And Louisville's two game losing streak is over. And one big reason why that, that, that uh, Louisville was able to get back on the winning track is Kylie Shook, and Kylie joins us now. Kylie, boy, you almost had a triple-double. 10 points, 10 boards, 7 blocks. What was the key to you keeping Kunane in check tonight? Um, she's an amazing player, so she's the key to their team. She's a, uh, amazing. Like She averages a double-double, so we knew that we had to stop her in order to help to get this win. Kylie, when you can play on the defensive end the way that you did, blocking shots, contesting Kunane, you held her for 1 for 11, or 0 for 11 on the paint. She only had one basket. When you can play her straight up like that, how good does that help your perimeter defense? How much does that help your perimeter defense? I think it helps it a lot because this whole game plan was not getting beat on drives because she is such a phenomenal player. I can't help off. So I think it really helped our outside game that the guards stuck to the game plan and I could stay on her. What makes you such a good shot blocker? I tried to just time it. <laughs> I always say that it was me growing up with boys. They're more athletic, so I had to time it better, but. You were just one off of your career high, which was eight blocks, as we're taking a look at some of your handiwork, really, on, on both ends of the floor. So you, Louisville, coming in, just one loss to Ohio State before that run. How much of a difference does it make to have Balagoon out there on the floor? She She's definitely a good player. She spaces the floor, allows us to have driving room, and kick to her. We have. Any, anybody can score on our starting five, so it really helps. So the two-game losing streak, and uh, Louisville fans, you have great fans in Louisville, but it was like the sky was falling. Everybody thought that things were falling apart. What was your mindset, the team's mindset, after winning two in a row coming into this one tonight? We have to get it. Um, they, they took number one. Um, we kind of had a chip on our shoulder, something to prove. We knew we had to come out here and play our best. All right, and uh, Kylie Shook, certainly a great effort on your part. Congratulations. So a tie atop the uh, ACC standings has uh, 10 points, 10 rebounds, and seven blocks. Thank you. So uh, Louisville with the big win tonight as they take it by the final of 66 to 59. So let's take a look now at the updated standings. And it is a... Two-way tie now for first base, first place, Louisville and NC State. Florida State did not play tonight. Hey, Duke has gotten hot all of a sudden. So Duke now in the top four, which is important for the double buy in the tournament. And you think they're into the NCAAs now? I do. I think Virginia Tech is in the NCAA as well. And Boston College and Syracuse are still in the conversation. So the ACC tournament is going to be exciting. And whoever gets those top four spots is definitely going to have a huge advantage. So Jasmine Jones led the way with 19 points. She and Dana Evans combining for 33 after they struggled in those two losses without Elizabeth Balagoon. Nothing's wrong with Louisville 
They're back. They are tied for first place now with NC State with a 66-59 win. For Deb Antonelli and our entire crew, I'm Pam Ward reminding you that all ACC is coming up next. We say good night from Raleigh and hello to our friends in the studio. What, no matter what their number is. That's what I think because of geography. Time now on this possession for State. Jones finishes. He used a lot of shot clock. Westmore, Westmore wanted a timeout and the officials didn't see it. One minute to go. I saw it because as soon as the basket scored, I looked right at him. That's usually what the officials do because they anticipate the timeout. Russell Robinson back in the game for Louisville. Gives him another ball handler and defender. That would do it. Oh, bucket. Elizabeth Balagoon has spent a lot of time on airplanes in the last few days. Coming back from Serbia, and that She told me she had to be tougher, Pam, when she was over there as Matt Crutchfield hits a three, and now Westmore gets a timeout. But Balagoon today in shoot around said, I am so happy to be back. I missed my teammates, and I learned that uh, I got to be tougher and grittier from my experience with the national team. And that's one thing that you that you you hear often when players even get to train or practice against the national team. Louisville had a chance to play the U.S. national team, but Balagoon for three. She hesitates. You don't come with a long closeout. Wide open. So Jeff Walls, his team going to the three line, and according to Charlie Cream, our bracketologist, he says that Louisville will move back to a two with the win tonight. And Maryland would become the final number one seed, replacing NC State. Maryland had an emphatic win against Iowa tonight. Maryland's won 10 in a row. They, they are playing some good basketball, and it's a team that NC State beat earlier. So if Louisville hangs on to win, both teams will have two losses. And Louisville with the tie break since they only played this one time during the regular season. NC State has not won the regular season in the ACC since 1990, right? That's 30 years. That's staggering. That's a long time. I read that in prep for this game, and I was like, what? What the what? 30 years? And they have not won a tournament since 1991. The great Kay Al with the head coach for all of that success, but it's been a, it's been a little bit of a dry spell. They've gotten to the tournament regularly. Wes Moore has gotten into two straight Sweet 16s, but that's a, that's a long time for this program. It's a drought for sure. Louisville trying to get what would be their third straight regular season title. Of course, Notre Dame has dominated since they joined this league. Well, Duke dominated with Gail Gesson, course. Yep. Sylvia Hatchell had her oh, run with Ivory Latta and Anna Larkins. They won, dominated the league for Maryland before they left for the Big Ten. Lamentable. I'm not happy about that. But uh, now NC State trying to hang in there. Malagoon back at the line. Tomorrow night, a top 10 ACC wrestling matchup right here in this building as NC State, their unbeaten take on the once beaten Hokies of Virginia Tech. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Now doing delivering at the line. NC State's eight game winning streak and it come to a close, just their second loss of the year. They lost to North Carolina. And now Louisville about to come in and beat them for the sixth straight time. And you could tell Jeff Walls at shoot around today was confident about his group and put together a terrific game plan. He anticipated NC State's ball screen defense and his preparation. And getting Elizabeth Balagoon back. Puts everybody back in their normal rotation and in their normal routine on the floor. And then what a terrific job by Kylie Shook. Crutchfield with the three, but it's going to be too little, too late. Ace Koenig, just four points tonight. She was 0 for 6. So Koenig and Kunane will combine 
Well, Kunain was one for 12. They are combined three for 21 from the floor, the two leading scorers. And Kunain did get to the line, got most of her points at the free throw line, but just not enough. Didn't see a lot of smile from Big Smile today. Yeah. You know, Skyler Shook didn't give her anything to smile about. Skyler Shook with a tremendous effort, especially on the defensive end. There's Kylie, who is one of 15 players on the Naismith Defensive National Player of the Year list. Well, she was impressive. Uh, she showed us tremendous gritty toughness. Her grit and toughness was outstanding on the defensive end. Jeff Walls has got really got to be pleased with this performance. You know, I've said all season, Florida State's had the hardest conference schedule, but Louisville's had the toughest stretch, and they went through part of that stretch without Elizabeth Balagoon, which the committee will take into consideration. And coming in here and knocking off NC State, the number four team, will carry a lot of weight as you move forward with the remaining schedule. A lot of winnable games there at the end of the season. We will be, or I will be in uh, Louisville for that Notre Dame game Sunday afternoon at 3 Eastern time. But Jeff Walls, very pleased with the effort as well. He should be. Kylie Shook, as we mentioned, has been absolutely terrific. 10 points, 10 rebounds. She almost had a triple-double with blocks because she has seven blocks. And really bottling up Lisa Kunane. So NC State, 59 points, ties a season low. They had 59 and a win against Wake Forest. But they got down in the first quarter, could not quite catch up. Louisville wins it. So Kylie Shook is tonight's player of the game, brought to you by Zaxby's. She was terrific on both ends of the floor, particularly defensively. And we will be looking for an interview with Kylie. Before we say goodnight, that is a terrific line, especially considering she's going against Kunane, one of the best players in the league. Yeah, that was an outstanding job to hold Kunane to one for 12, and the one basket that Elisa Kunane had was a three. Really unusual. Terrific job defending inside. That's a big win on the road for Louisville. So NC State drops to 11 and two in the league. Cardinals also 11 and two. So a tie is off the ACC standings as the season winds down. Again, this is their only regular season matchup. NC State has games coming up against Georgia Tech, then they go to Miami. Hey. And Louisville's two-game losing streak is over. And one big reason why that, that, that uh, Louisville was able to get back on the winning track is Kylie Shook, and Kylie joins us now. Kylie, boy, you almost had a triple-double. 10 points, 10 boards, 7 blocks. What was the key to you keeping Kunane in check tonight? Um, she's an amazing player, so she's the key to their team. She's a, uh, amazing. Like, she averages a double-double, so we knew that we had to stop her in order to help to get this win. Kylie, when you can play on the defensive end the way that you did, blocking shots, contesting Kunane, you held her for 1 for 11, or 0 for 11 on the paint. She only had one basket. When you can play her straight up like that, how good does that help your perimeter defense? How much does that help your perimeter defense? I think it helps it a lot because this whole game plan was not getting beat on drives because she is such a phenomenal player. I can't help off. So I think it really helped our outside game that the guards stuck to the game plan and I could stay on her. What makes you such a good shot blocker? I tried to just time it. <laughs> I always say that it was me growing up with boys. They're more athletic, so I had to time it better, but. You were just one off of your career high, which was eight blocks, as we're taking a look at some of your handiwork, really, on, on both ends of the floor. So you, Louisville, c coming in, just one loss to Ohio State before that run. How much of a difference does it make to have Balagoon out there on the floor? She, she's definitely a good player. She spaces the floor, allows us to have driving room, and kick to her. We have. Any, anybody can score on our starting five, so it really helps. So the two-game losing streak, and I like Louisville fans, you have great fans in Louisville, but it was like the sky was falling. Everybody thought that things were falling apart. What was your mindset, the team's mindset, after winning two in a row coming into this one tonight? We have to get it. Um, they, they took number one. Um, we kind of had a chip on our shoulder, something to prove. We knew we had to come out here and play our best.
All right, and uh, Kylie Shook, certainly a great effort on your part. Congratulations. You. So a tie atop the uh, ACC standings has uh, 10 points, 10 rebounds, and seven blocks. Thank you. So uh, Louisville with the big win tonight as they take it by the final of 66 to 59. So let's take a look now at the updated standings. And it is a two-way tie now for first base, first place, Louisville and NC State. Florida State did not play tonight. Hey, Duke has gotten hot all of a sudden. So Duke now in the top four, which is important for the double bye in the tournament. And you think they're into the NCAAs now? I do. I think Virginia Tech is in the NCAA as well. And Boston College and Syracuse are still in the conversation. So the ACC tournament is going to be exciting. And whoever gets those top four spots is definitely going to have a huge advantage. So Jasmine Jones led the way with 19 points. She and Dana Evans combining for 33 after they struggled in those two losses without Elizabeth Balagoon. Nothing's wrong with Louisville. They're back. They are tied for first place now with NC State with a 66-59 win. For Deb Antonelli and our entire crew, I'm Pam Ward reminding you that all ACC is coming up next. We say good night from Raleigh and hello to our friends in the studio. Well, welcome into the ACC Network studios alongside Kelly Gramlich and Monica McNutt. I'm Kelsey Riggs. You guys, Louisville snaps a two-game losing streak, goes on the road, and knocks off number four, NC State, at home. Monica, what did you think was the biggest key that played a part in why they were able to do that? I think they talked to her after the postgame, both Deb and Pam. Kylie Shook. I think she was <laughs> humongous. I also think Jasmine Jones had a terrific game. But in general, the intensity that Louisville played with, I think that was the difference. Speaking of Jasmine Jones, you just mentioned her 19 points, 8 rebounds, and she joins us now. Congratulations, Jasmine. You guys able to go on the road and snap a two-game losing streak. What went right for you guys to be able to do that tonight? I just think our, our week of practice, uh, the intensity was great in practice. Everybody was dialed in and focused, and we knew that this game was a must win for us. Um, we knew we had to bounce back, and we knew it was coming into a hostile environment. NC State is a great team, and we knew we just had to win this game, and we came out, we played tough, we played hard, and we played aggressive, and we got the job done. Jasmine, part of the two losses, we've talked about it plenty, was that you were missing a teammate in Elizabeth Balagoon. How much of a piece of the puzzle is she? What does she bring to the squad when she's on the floor? He is great. She's a knockdown shooter, so the defense can focus on her more, and it allows Dana to have easy dri driving lanes like she did tonight, and me to have easy driving lanes. So he is a big part of our team. We definitely missed her in those two losses, but I'm glad we got her back tonight, and we couldn't have done it without her. Jasmine, I felt like at times tonight you weren't going to let your team lose. Did you hear some of that talk outside of practice, outside of what Coach Walls was saying about NC State possibly being the best team in this league? Did, did that matter to you at all with this one? No, it, it, it didn't matter to us, but we knew NC State is a great team. But we just knew, like, I talked to the team uh, before, like, on Tuesday when we had practice. I uh, gathered the seniors and Dana. I said, y'all, we know what we have to do. We haven't lost two games in a row since my freshman year. Dana hasn't lost two games in a row since she's been here. So this was something new for the new people coming in. So we just knew we had to have this uh, focus and this intensity and in practice coming up. And so we just brung the juice today, and we got it done. Bring the juice. I like I it. This that, was yeah. a, a statement win for you guys. <laughs> What's the ceiling for this team? How, how far can Louisville go coming off this win? Where can you guys take it? If we continue to play how we play today and focus on the scouting report and execute a game plan, the, the, the ceiling is the roof, as Michael Jordan said. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine Jones, 19 points and a big road win. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Speaking of that performance, let's take a look at the numbers. Not just her, as she mentioned, really a team effort. Dana Evans, 14 points, four rebounds, and Jasmine Jones, 17 points and seven rebounds. Kelly, Dana Evans is someone that we've been talking about all year, and now we are seeing a lot of these other players for Louisville step up. This is a great dynamic duo with Dana Evans and Jasmine Jones. Uh, Jasmine brought the juice. That's the one-two punch <laughs> right there. I mean, it doesn't get much better. But, you know, I just felt at times that Jasmine Jones was not going to let her team lose this game. She's a senior. She said she's never lost three games in a row in a Louisville uniform, and she wasn't going to let it happen. And I thought that was just tremendous. She played so well. She rebounded the ball. She was great defensively, hit a couple big threes. And it felt like her leadership and the maturity of this program really showed tonight for Louisville. 
It's those meetings. It's those player-called meetings. I don't care what's what it is, those meetings mean something. Mm -hmm. Now, it means the team is going one way or yeah. another behind them, <laughs> but they truly mean something. I think, for me, offensively, Jasmine Jones was fantastic tonight, as was Dana Evans, but it really, for me, was about the defense that Louisville played. That was signature Jeff Wall's get after it in the half court, no to scouting report defense. I mean, Mikasa Robinson at points, I was just st struck by the way she was defending th the penetration by the NC State guards. And then Kylie Shook, how, seven, seven blocks. When you're approaching a triple double with, with blocks, the blocks, right? You've had a good night. Absolutely. You've had a good night. Well, on the other side, NC State snapped an eight game winning streak. So we will see how they respond from that one. And man, what a game this was. Number four, NC State taking on number nine, Louisville, in this top 10 matchup. Midway through the first quarter, Louisville up one. Dana Evans gets it outside, makes a move, gets the defender in the air. The basket and the foul. Cardinals up Fix four. Fix the pony. <laughs> Fix the pony. That's important, too. Look good, play good, feel good. Isn't that right? That's there right. it is. How about this? Jasmine Jones, probably not the last you'll hear of her. Louisville up double digits. Then, early in the second quarter, NC State down 11. And that was Jada Boyd. Layup and the foul. NC State now trailing. Then, closing seconds of the first half. That's Dana Evans on the wing. Drains the three. Louisville back on top. Double digits. Second half now. Closing minutes of the third quarter, Jada Boyd in the post, draws the foul, converts the bucket as well after a made free throw. NC State now down four, so we're getting close, but then Ace Kone comes off the screen, gets it to Elisa Kunane, who spots up NC State down three now. Then more from Jasmine Jones, told you you'd see her. Louisville goes up eight. Jasmine had 19 points, but how about Kylie Shook? 10 points, 10 rebounds, and seven blocks. She was impressive in Louisville's effort to get back on track after that two-game losing streak. And not just the numbers she put up, but Monica, also the job that she was able to do against Elisa Kune. Man, praiseworthy, for sure. She took a page out of Janelle Bailey's book, who to this point was the one team that had a win over NC State. She was physical. She executed great in terms of the game plan of walling her up, of not allowing her to get to her drop step, which she loves, and she did a great job of timing her block shots. But it wasn't as if she was just sending Kunane's shots all over the place. She was blocking everybody. <laughs> she was, and she also mentioned after the game, it was a great point, she wasn't able to help off. So the guards really had to stay in front of those ball handlers, level off the ball handlers, not let them get in the paint. So it was really an all-around effort defensively for Louisville. But Kylie Shook, to block all those, all those shots without fouling, too, it's such an art. It's a skill. Yeah, she's 6'4". She, she, she's tall. But she finds a way to do it. It's, it's really impressive. This is a Louisville team that prior to this two-game losing streak, skid rather, had won 13 straight. And it felt like they just maybe needed something to get them back on track. Was this it tonight? And do you feel like for the rest of the, the season, we're going to see this Louisville team that we saw tonight? I do think that this game was it. I think this game gives them the confidence that they were maybe questioning after those last two losses. Although, according to Coach Walls, their, their heads were never in the wrong place. However... Jasmine Jones told us herself there was a little team meeting. <laughs> team meetings mean we need to regroup. Detective but I do. Monica is on the case. <laughs> I'm on it. I do think that this is the win that will put this team back on track. You look at their next four games. Four games. They've got Notre Dame, Georgia Tech, Pitt, and Boston College. No disrespect to those squads. However, Louisville is at the top tier or one of the top tier teams in the conference for a reason. So I think it's just a matter of them fine tuning moving forward. Um, in the losses against Virginia State and Syracuse, I am a little bit concerned when you think big t picture in terms of the tournament. Yes, they were missing Balagoon, but they will face some styles that they're not accustomed mm -hmm. to playing in the ACC play. But they did a good job of going out and playing solid teams in the non-conference, too. So it all balances up. And then how about the other side? Another team that's in the top tier of this conference is NC State. And yes, it hurts to lose at home to another good team when you want to get a statement win like that. But Kelly, what do you think about this NC State team and maybe what they learned from this? There are still some positives to take. I thought the freshmen really showed up. Jada Boyd was excellent. Jakia Brown-Turner was really good as well. It all comes back to Kunay. And when you're physical with her, she struggles. And she's really been getting a lot of her points from the free throw line lately. I feel like inside, she's going up just to draw contact. She's not going up to score. And that's been the biggest difference with Kunane. For NC State to make a run and possibly get over that hump, get to the Elite Eight, even the Final Four, Kunane has to look a lot better. And she has to be able to take that contact. Because Kylie Shook is one of the best defensive players in the country. But you're going to see players like her in the NCAA tournament. And to your point, Monica, you always say this, 
if Kunain doesn't play well, yeah. NC State really can't beat mm -hmm. a good team. Mm -hmm. I mean, tonight we saw it. You look at their guard play outside of the freshman, Ace Conant, Kai Crushfield, they combined for just 12 points. Mm. And these are supposed to be your upperclassmen, and so they struggled tonight. I think Kunain was exposed in that if she cannot get to her spot, literally the block on either side of the paint, She's either too far out or she's not able to get into that, that drop step. And so that is, that's a concern for me because you go outside of the ACC, you run into some of those big bodies in the Big 12, the Big 10 even. She's going to see girls that are her size and that are prepared to defend and run rim to rim the way Kylie Shook did. These two teams both now 11-2 and two in the ACC. You know what that means? A tie at the top. So we will see how the rest of the season plays out.